This is Albert Sarkisian, new world record holder for catch and release of a tiger shark, and you're watching Jack and Tim. You're talking with Ty on Yak in Texas. Hey guys, welcome back to Yak in Texas. I'm Ty. A guy named William emailed me some great questions, and instead of just replying back, I thought, I'll just answer them on Yak in Texas. That way we can all benefit from the question and answer. What do you use to go up to the oil rigs? Well, we pretty much just paddle up to them and tie them onto a ladder. You can also tie a rope to a milk jug, fill it with water, and throw it over a pipe. Or you can use a, a gaff, tie your rope to the gaff, and use the gaff hook to hook onto the pipe. Um, you just got to kind of be creative and just hook up to it the best you can. A lot of times the best thing is to use a claw anchor or a bruise claw and just get 50 yards out, anchor out, drift back parallel to the rig, stop next up to the rig about 50 yards away. That gives you space between you and the rig. You hook up to a fish, you can let it run out to sea and kind of horse it away from the rig. When you're right up on the rig, a lot of times they'll just go right through the, the rig legs and cut you off. So. An anchor is always better, but if you have to tie up, just tie up. William goes on to ask, what is the best method of getting bait when you're offshore? Well, William, I keep two inshore rods, 12 pound test spinning rods on, on hand. One with a sabiki rig and one with the Berkeley gulp system. Just a little chartreuse grub with a half, half ounce uh, jig head. When I get to the rig, I start throwing that grub against the rig legs and reeling and I usually catch blue runners, little jacks. Uh, sometimes I pick up nice Spanish doing that too. But that gives me immediate live bait. I also grab and then I usually put the hardtail or whatever on a big rod, throw it out, grab a sabiki jig, drop it to the bottom, start jigging that and that'll give you some smaller sardines and whatnot, some threadfin herring. So give four or five, make sure you have four or five with you because they get cut off a lot and bring you plenty of gulp baits. They smell, they have taste to them, and they will pick up a lot of medium-sized big fish baits. Sabikis and gulps. There's your answer. Okay, William also asks about kayaks, the magic question. Moving from inshore to offshore, he says he's interested in the Pescador 12 from Home Academy. What do I think about it? Well, this is how I feel, William, about kayaks. Big water, big boat, big fish. If you're going offshore, it's big water, you're dealing with big fish, the more space, the better. I say go 13 to 16 foot. It's gonna track better, give you more cooler space, more rod space, and more fish fighting space. 12 foot for me is like Texas Hill Country, uh, rivers, a lot of guys that, that like the rivers, they like the 12 foot because they cut. They just turn on a dime because they're so short. Turning on a dime offshore in big water is kind of a hassle. It tends to wag with every paddle. It doesn't want to track straight like a, like a 13 to 16 foot boat will. 14 foot being the magic spot, I'd say. Good all around everything. 12 foot, more of a river boat. 13 to 16, great bay and offshore. That's my answer and I'm sticking to it. Lastly, William asks about leader systems. He says inshore they don't use much leaders, so he wants to know what to use out there. This is kind of my general rule of thumb, what I do. Number one, a spool of 50 pound mono, just some strand or whatever. Some 50 pound mono goes a long way. I've caught a lot of sharks, kings, and um, barracuda, all kind of stuff with just 50 pound mono, jacks especially. It gets cut off every now and then, but it's a great backup plan. You can make four or five 50 pound mono liters, you know, castable, you know, two, three foot long. It's two, two, two to two and a half maybe, so you can throw it. You can tie a hook on there, you can tie a plug on there, a jig, whatever. 50 pound is very tieable and it has some good cutability. On the next episode of 30 Miles Out, you'll see me catch a hammerhead, about a four or five foot hammerhead shark with 50 pound mono a leader. It wasn't intentional, but it works. So 50 pound mono is kind of my backup plan. It's cheap, it's easy. And then my favorite thing for toothy fish for Pelagics Offshore is 45 pound single strand wire. Why 45 pound, why so light? Because it is very thin and that crystal clear water, plegics have big eyes. I mean, kings have eyes like that. And if they can see it, they'll veer off of it. So you get a lot more strikes with thinner wire. If the water's dingy and minty green, you could probably go with 65 pound single strand. 
but I find I get a lot more hits with 45 and I don't get cut off anymore. So get you a, a spool of 45 pound single strand wire. You can break off, you know, uh, two, three foot lengths of that and haywire twist on you a, a treble hook and you can free line baits with that. Um, and you have some, a spool of 50 pound uh, mono in your boat and you can use that as backup or just general purpose for throwing plugs or throwing jigs. It all works great. So in summation, 50 pound mono for general purpose and 45 pound single strand wire. Hey, I'd like to thank William for all the great questions. If you'd like me to answer some questions on Yak in Texas, go to 30milesout.com, email me whatever you want to know, and I'll see if I can't do an episode on it. Till next time, I'm Ty, and you've been watching Yak in Texas.